So I'm having a chat with Matt of Low Moon. How are you? Good, man. How are you? Not bad, thanks so much. So after this interview, we'll be playing a, a new single of yours called Waiting a Lifetime. Tell us about the single. Yeah, I mean, I, I um, it's a, a song that kind of started with a riff. Sam kind of came over to my house with this riff, um, piano riff. And really, it was just born out of a jam at my house. Um, came together really quickly, like the original idea came together really quickly and the lyric waiting a lifetime, I kind of felt like was a placeholder. Um, and it was a placeholder all the way up until like recording and mixing. I kept thinking we were going to change it. And and I finally was like, Oh, Chris Anta, you sing the waiting a lifetime part. And then I'll kind of do something underneath it. Um, and it just stuck. It was, it's one of those things where like you get so used to the words coming out of your mouth that you couldn't hear it any other way. Um, so sometimes that happens and it's for the better and sometimes it's for the worse with this. I think we, we kind of got lucky. It felt like it was always meant to be that. Um, and I just think it's classic overthinking, but yeah, when Sam came to my house with the piano riff, it kind of reminded me of New Year's day by U2 or something like that. And, um, we just kind of jammed on it. It took us a bit to get the groove right and the lyrics all settled, but, um, yeah, but the impetus was, was really quick. Nice, thanks. And it's been a few months now since you last released your record. How's it been going down? Good. I mean, it's it's you know, it's always weird to release records these days, but um yeah, we love the record. Really excited to get over and play it. You know, I think like anything, like any record, it always takes on a life of its own when you start playing it live. We had played some of these songs in November of 2023, but the record wasn't released. So it was kind of like playing it to people who didn't have any idea what we were playing. Um, so I'm excited to just get over and play it um, for people that have been kind of living with the record and to see what we kind of changed from the recordings and see how it kind of develops live. Yeah, most definitely. We'll touch on the tour in a, in a moment, but I'd like to talk a little bit more about the record as well. So with the, the, the sound that you made with the record, was it the sound you wanted to make or is it just how it turned out in the studio? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I, I think like with any record, you go into it with a kind of concept or or I like to think that that's something that we, you know, always start with something. Um, the end result is never what you think it's going to be. It's what the record should be. Um, it just kind of presents itself as you get into the recording process. And um, I think this record, we had a few stipulations, one of which was that we wanted it to feel more like the band playing live, I think we we definitely captured that. Um, Mike Davis, who is our engineer and co-producer, really kind of made a, a recording environment that allowed that to happen. And um, yeah, but like anything, you go into it thinking it's one thing and what comes out is just what's supposed to be. So um, I could say that that's definitely the case for this album, for sure. Nice. Yeah. Great stuff. And you are heading out on tour end of October into November across Europe and here in the UK as well. I bet you can't wait to be over here doing some shows. Can't wait. Definitely. Um, definitely our biggest shows we've done there yet. So that's really exciting for us. Um, yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. How is the, or uh, how's your set list looking for it at the moment? Yeah, we've, I think we've got like, it's funny now with three albums, you know, I look at, at the records that, you know, we've been kind of, that have become like staples and there's definitely some songs on the new record that are so much better live. Um, like Evidence, for example, we kind of found a new zone for that that ending part. And it's like, can't imagine that ever not being in a set, you know? So there's certain songs like Loveless and Evidence, I think. and um, But then the rest is up for grabs. I mean, we, we rehearsed a bunch of songs. Um, across all three albums some of which i i we still play and i'm like ah it's just not very good live yet so you know I, I, but we'll see yeah there's there's some songs like when the kids are gone that i i know we rehearsed that i'm really excited to try from the new record um and there's some that we probably can't pull off yet yeah. <laughs> so we'll just see you how know, it goes every night i'm sure we'll be a little bit different for sure do you think is there a track of yours that you want to get into a set that might be a bit of a curveball that people might not expect that you kind of want to get in there at some point? Honest, honest on the new record would be great. I mean, I kind of feel like that's an encore song, come back, 
bring the mood down to bring it up one more time but um we we haven't even rehearsed that i think it's more so like i just have to get used to playing and singing it because it was just one take and can't even remember exactly what i did but the last couple of days i've spent kind of relearning it so um that's one i mean you know, there's Digging Up the Dead from the second record. I, I always liked playing that one live. So maybe that one will make its way in. Um, and then Mary in the Woods on the new record. I really, we really want to try that. I just think we need one more hand to to pull it off. So I don't know if it'll make a, an appearance yet. Yeah, cool. And uh, you'll be finishing off this year across the States doing some shows, but that goes into next year as well. How is 2025 looking for you? Right now, we're just going to um, do those shows in January and then hopefully make a new record. Um, I think that's the plan to to definitely make a new record. I mean, we started working on it already um, and we'll just see how it progresses from there. But yeah, yeah I think 25, want to want to make a new record for sure. Nice. Sounds good to me. Do you know what direction you're uh, wanting to take it? Not yet. Not yet. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, absolutely. I'd like to talk about the writing side as well. So for you, how do tracks normally start off? Um, it's kind of depends, like, you know, I, th I think there's usually some kind of, you know, like for water, there was that riff that I had and I just started kind of jamming over top of it, singing nonsense for a long time. The band jumped in. That was all done in the room. I mean, it was very much so like the band was there. Same, same thing with Waiting a Lifetime, you know, and then I'll go back and kind of look at the, whatever the kind of whatever I'm babbling on about and try to make sense of those lyrics. And if there's a line like waiting a lifetime or goodbye, I wish you way more than luck or kind of let those things um, dictate the rest of the lyrics. Um, and for this record, we kind of had an interesting way of doing it. I had a notebook that was kind of just a shared note on my, on my phone. And I wrote down lines and I wrote down um, phrases and, and some were like full lyrical phrases and some were verses. And then I kind of shared it with Sam and had him go through and kind of do like an editing process. Um, for a lot of these songs, that that's what happened. Like I had like a rough lyric and then I let him edit and then he threw it back to me and then I went in and sang it. It was really interesting. Um, we'd never done that before on a collaborative way of lyric writing. Mm. Um, I found it to be super um, kind of freeing because I was able to just kind of just write something as a as, as stream of consciousness that that made sense to me and then went to Sam like does this make any sense and then he said actually it does or actually it doesn't but now it does I moved this line here yeah. and that line here so that was really 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 um fun and interesting and it kept it it kept the, the record kind of evolving over the recording process too because I kept editing the notes I kept editing the lyric sheet um so yeah that was that was something that we tried that was new, and I'm sure we'll keep that going for the next record. Yeah, nice. And, and with a, a long list of potential lyrics for the future, I'm sure you've still got that going. Is there any that come to mind that you really want to use in a song in at some point in the future? Um, I No. I mean, I think it's just like, I just keep going back there and mining it and seeing what happens. Also, a lot of it is how it sounds, you know, the phonetics of it all, mm. like the way it actually reads next to core uh next to a lyric or a melody um so like one line might be great for an idea um in context of a lyric and a melody and then if i try singing that over something else it doesn't really work it's it's really interesting how that kind of breaks down and and how much of the phonetics and the way it feels out of the mouth and the way it sings and the cadence of it and the tempo and the timing plays into making it feel right yeah absolutely so it's hard to kind of like recycle mm. but there are always moments when i look at lyrics and i'm like oh it's a great lyric i just have to use that line um nothing comes to mind right this second i mean actually there is a song there is a lyric called belief killing street that we we always thought was a good lyric and then we found a way to make we actually finished a song called belief killing street just recently which will probably be on a new album or something but that that was a great line that we always wanted to use and we found a way to use it. So, yeah, I guess, I guess there is. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Awesome. Matt, it's been a pleasure having a chat with you. Thank you, man. Thanks for doing it. Appreciate it.